Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos involving cellular reproduction. This video will provide an overview of different classifications of cellular reproduction, as well as an overview of how these processes work. The picture on this slide exhibits a type of asexual cell division called mitosis. This is one form of cell reproduction that occurs in humans and will be discussed in this series of videos. In the previous unit, introducing cells and different forms of cell transport, I described why cells divide. To allow for the transport of nutrients into the cell and waste out of the cell in a more efficient and timely manner. If cells were too big, it would take too much time for diffusion of these nutrients to occur. To summarize this concept, the smaller a cell is, the larger the ratio of surface area to volume that a cell possesses. Examples of the math behind this concept are provided in the picture on the bottom right of this slide. The life cycle of the cell, or the cell cycle, includes all the events that occur between the time that a cell forms and the time that a cell divides and forms another cell. While this process might sound simple, it is actually very complex. There are countless steps that must take place before, during, and after the division of a cell. These steps will be described in detail later in this unit. There are two main classifications of cellular reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. The picture on this slide exhibits some examples of these types of reproduction involving different types of cells. Over the next few slides, these forms of reproduction will be compared and contrasted. The advantages and disadvantages of these different types of reproduction will also be discussed. The term sexual can is defined as relating to, produced by, or involving reproduction characterized by the union of male and female gametes. In short, this is the process by which two individuals combine their genetic information to form new offspring. As the definition above stated, this process involves gametes, or sex cells. Eggs, scientifically refers to as ova and sperm, are the two types of gametes that humans possess. These types of cells contain half of the normal DNA that is typically found in cells. Fertilization is the process by which sperm and egg unite in humans to form what is called a zygote. The process of fertilization and the formation of a zygote is shown in the picture to the right. This process occurs in the uterine or fallopian tubes and is illustrated here. There are some distinct advantages and disadvantages to sexual reproduction. One of the most important benefits is that unique offspring are produced. Since two parents are involved, each of which donate half of their DNA to the new organism, the new organism is different than either of its parents. Ignoring identical twins, each of the offspring that are produced should also be different from one another. While there are advantages to sexual reproduction, there are also some disadvantages. First, organisms require a mate to produce new offspring, and second, the process itself is much more complicated. In humans, sexual reproduction occurs through a process called meiosis. This process, as you might immediately notice, is quite complex. There is an entire video devoted to explaining the intricacies of this process. The A in asexual reproduction means not. Asexual reproduction is a form of reproduction that is not sexual. That is, it does not involve two parents or sex cells that are called gametes. Asexual reproduction requires only a single parent. In this process, identical copies of cells are made. The process occurs in somatic or body cells, anything found in the body except for gametes, that contain 100% of the genetic material that an organism usually possesses. When entire organisms are cloned, as the image to the right suggests, somatic cells are used instead of gametes. The first cloned sheep, Dolly, didn't require two parents, but just one cell. Dolly was genetically identical to her only parent, her mother. Like sexual reproduction that was just described, there are some distinct pros and cons to this form of cellular reproduction. One advantage of the process involves its simplicity. Since there is only one parent involved, there are fewer steps, fewer things that could go awry. Another advantage involves the fact that only one parent is required. There is no need to find a mate to form new offspring. One disadvantage that was just mentioned for asexual reproduction is that all the offspring produced are clones of one another. The previous example involving Dolly could be used to describe how this is problematic. If Dolly's mother was susceptible to breast cancer, Dolly could be too. Evolutionarily speaking, diversity is very important for a species' survival. 
There are many common forms of asexual reproduction in different types of organisms. Some organisms, such as bacteria and yeast, can only reproduce asexually. They have no means for combining their genetic material to form diverse offspring. Yeasts reproduce asexually through a process called budding, and bacteria do so through a process called binary fission. Many more complex, multicellular organisms can perform asexual and sexual forms of cell reproduction. While humans can perform meiosis to produce new human embryos, most of the cell reproduction in the human body occurs through a process called mitosis. When cells are damaged, they are replaced through a process of mitosis. As a human grows, more and more cells are produced through mitosis. That is the end of this video, Overviewing Cellular Reproduction. If you are interested in learning about other specific topics relating to cell reproduction or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.